What's up, squash players? It's Pierre. I'm back. I took a few weeks off of making videos, uh, partly because I can't play squash. There's no new squash equipment coming out. I can't test it if it did come out, and I wasn't sure what to do. But we're going to do a, a new idea. I'm going to go through some of the classic PSA matches that, um, that are being posted on YouTube and try and do a little bit of analysis. I got an, um, I'm gonna get to that in a sec. The only things I have been doing during the coronavirus, well, first of all, you can see <laughs> I'm in the basement. I needed to find a new location to do my videos because I got my whole family at home and it's kind of messing with the whole normal workflow. So here we are, coronavirus squash source basement time. In terms of products, well, since I'm not playing squash, I've been going for some runs. I did not own any running shoes, so the poor eye squash shoes. Well, they've been good. I've been using these as running shoes. They've been help holding up well. They're no longer probably suitable for the squash court since they're all dirty now. But uh, but they've been these shoes have are pretty durable and um, and they have not hardly been damaged at all by my outdoor running. I highly recommend going for runs or doing whatever you can and uh, grab a pair of squash shoes if you don't have running shoes. It, it's working fine. The other only piece of equipment I've bought recently is a jump rope. I could not find one on any of my normal stores. And I don't actually remember where I bought this. Oh, Elite SRS. It's some US website. And I bought myself a jump rope. So jump rope, go for a run around the block or, you know, go for a little bit of a jog. That's all I've been doing. Just trying to wait out the coronavirus and get back on the squash court, which I don't know when it's going to happen. A squash is just about the worst possible setup for coming back for this from this coronavirus. We are in the court together, colliding, <laughs> breathing on each other, and it's a gym, which is in Philadelphia. It's closed; these they're closed right now, and they're, they're I don't know when they're going to reopen. So we have a long road ahead of us, and we're going to need to find some things to do in the meantime. So what I thought I would do is take a look at some past pro squash matches and try to answer the question, for the pros, what percentage of the time do they hit straight versus cross court? And so I took a, one particular match to start with just to try and generate some data. If you haven't seen this match, I'll put a link to it in the description below this video. Check it out. It is the 2015 Laguna final. This is between Rami Ashur and Mohamed El Shabagi. It's an hour and a half match. I took this match and shot by shot, I kind of broke down what each player hit in any given moment. Did they hit straight, cross court, or boast, or serve? I counted a straight shot, whether they hit a soft drop or a hard shot or a, a lob to the back. And same with the cross court. Lob was the same as a cross court nick. I just cared about, is it straight or cross or a boast? Um, and so question, what do you think the balance is between um, straight and cross and both that these players hit? Do you think it's 50-50 straight and cross? Do you think it's like 80-20? I'm going to tell you what I found. I'm going to skip to the data right here. So basically, in summary, both players hit about 60% of their shots straight and about 30% cross and about 5% boast. And that doesn't add up to 100, so it's not quite exact. So, and El Shabagi hit more straight than Rami did. And this was interesting. So Rami wins the match. It's a real squeaker, so this really could have gone either way. But Rami hit more cross courts, about 20 more over the course of the match, and he also hit more boasts, um, also about 20 more. So my read on that is that by hitting more cross courts, although it's riskier and a boast is risky too, as long as he can disguise it well, he's keeping Shorbaggy from, um, from pouncing on it. The thing I want to end with here is to show you his kind of preparation on some backhands to, to, to illustrate that you don't necessarily know which way he's going to go with it. And I think that a lot of the variety that, that Rami was able to bring to the game was just in disguising which way he was going to go up until the last second and that allowed him to 
hit a greater variety than other players. That's my theory, and I'm going to test that out by looking at a few more matches. Um, all right, let me show you this bit uh, with Rami. Oh, by the way, this is a little program I wrote. I probably spent a little too much time on this, but I wanted to be able to run kind of data on other matches and have it spit out the result for me because I'm a nerd. All right, here we go. Um, all right, here is a backhand example. So Sherbaggy lifts a nice ball down the wall, and which way do you think he's going to hit? Sherbaggy hasn't moved yet, so you know this this guy has to be pretty decent. Let's just see that one more time. Cool, now let's look at another example. <laughs> what will it be? <laughs> what will my second example be, straight or cross? <laughs> All right, here comes another one. What will he do? <laughs> He's gonna hit this one hard. Sherbaggy still hasn't moved. He's doing a little split step. All right, that one goes cross court. Oh, what a surprise. It's not a good shot, it bounces incredibly short. But the point being that from and what I think is a very similar setup, he can hit two completely different shots. That's what gives him that extra bit of deception and it's nothing too complicated he's not hitting any sort of crazy nicks here he's just keeping you guessing the whole time and Sherbaggy has this skill too and they can do it on both can do it on both sides but I think that that's kind of my takeaway from this is as I'm getting back into practicing squash is okay am I taking it back in such a way that my opponent doesn't know which way whether I'm going to go straight or cross Right, so those are some uh, some thoughts I had, and I hope you found them interesting as you think about your game and start contemplating coming back into squash about how you're gonna um, how you're gonna approach things when you come back. I know I'm gonna be working on that balance, and I'm gonna try and look at some other matches. If you guys like this kind of uh, this type of analysis, let me know. Give me a thumbs up on the video, and I will. Uh, and I'm looking forward now that I got this sweet basement set up. Uh, to doing, I'll be doing a few more uh, videos on a regular basis again, just looking at uh, looking at some stuff that we can find on the squash internets. All right, hope everybody's well. Take care. Thanks.